Seriously, on one life to live. Dean Baker pulled the plug on my show today. What? I'm done. I'm gonna give you this diamond someday, Blair. You didn't feel anything when I just kissed you. Nothing. I think Kevin's seeing another woman here in Lambeau. I think my wife's having an affair. If she is, and you want the goods on her, we can help. Marcy, Lois said you wanted to see me. Yes, hi. They told me at the university that you were working at home until your office was ready. Mm -hmm. And um, this is really important. Okay, what is it? Um, Dean Baker fired the voice of the night from the university radio station. And it was really unfair. Did he now? And do you know why he did that? Yes, because um, the voice of the night supported the peace rally. And he also said that the guys who trashed my room were morons. But, well, anyway, you know, we started a petition to get him back on the air. And I wanted to bring it to you. Wow. <laughs> Boy, you've got a ton of signatures, haven't you? <laughs> 1,862 so far. Students and faculty, and even some people in town. Everybody keeps on saying that freedom of speech, you know, it's right. Well, I think you know that I'm in favor of free speech. The voice of the night must be heard. Tell you what, Marcy. Why don't I just go have a little chat with Dean Baker? Right away. Thanks. Marcy Walsh. Out. And you are? Marcy's brother, Ron. And you are? Uh, Al Holden. Friend of hers? Boyfriend. Yeah? So you're the one who got my sister in all this trouble, huh? Kelly? There. How are you you know, now that I'm in Landview, I think I'm going to do some more charity work. Yeah, you know, I found out when I was in Texas that I'm pretty good at fundraising. Oh, you always were a softy for a good cause. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I can put my money where my mouth is. You know, when you're Mrs. Kevin Buchanan, people listen. Mm. Do you hear the doorbell? I hear it. Do mm -hmm. you want me to get it? No, I don't want you to get it. I want the housekeeper to get it. I must... <laughs> Doesn't she hear it ever? They're not! The door! So, um, any luck trying to figure out who this mystery woman is Kevin's supposedly seeing? No, I, uh, um, I'm sure whoever's sending those anonymous notes and making those phone calls is just trying to make things difficult for you and Kevin. Obviously. I mean, whoever it is, I mean, they must have an axe to grind, you know. They read something in the banner, they were upset about it, and an editor is a very easy target. I mean, you know that. Mm, maybe. But I don't like the fact that there's somebody out there threatening Kevin and our beautiful future together. I mean, Kevin is really going places. Yeah. You're really committed to this political future of his, aren't you? One thousand percent. Pardon me, Miss Blair. Mr. Walker Lawrence to see you. Well, hello, Walker and Lawrence. Hello, Blair. Check that out. What is it? Oh, no. Who pays for murder? No one. Mitchell Lawrence murder case closed. Well, somebody is going to get off scot-free. <laughs> I don't care about that. All I worry about is that this is going to make our morning edition stale before yeah. it even hits the stand. You can't keep scooping us. He's got to have somebody at the police department leaking this stuff to him. Mm. Bo's not going to be thrilled when he sees that. Well, when Kevin sees something he wants, he, he goes for it. And he always gets it. Those represent the son's stockholders already promised me their shares. And by tomorrow morning, we will have the 51% we need. 
So the sun's all ours. That's great. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe, how you doing? Great. Grandpa, I wanted to thank you for helping out Flash. He sent her all the way to London to see a specialist about her throat. Yeah, I heard. That crazy kid. Almost ruined her damn boys. Hey, do you want to come join us? Yeah, Joe and I are meeting Jessica and Allie for lunch. Uh, no, I'd love to, uh, thanks, but I'm gonna be busy and very busy on the phone. You two have fun. We'll see you. Bye, Grandpa. So, the big news is you rescued yet another damsel in distress. Not one, but two, apparently. Yeah, Jen and her mom got in a little bit of trouble, thanks to Troy McIver. I'm just glad I got there with the cops before it was too late. So turning yourself into Lancelot must have sealed the deal with Jen a little bit, huh? It's not like that. Oh. But we do love each other. That's why it's even more important now that we keep our distance. Yeah, well, you better go. Guess who just walked in? No, oh, it's cool. I mean, you know, we're bound to run into each other from time to time. We'll just have to pretend the other one isn't there. Well, that's some good strategy you got there, Joe. Good luck with that. So RJ has given me total creative freedom at Ultraviolet. I've got this great idea for an amateur night, right? I'm thinking about calling it Search and Destroy. What do you think? Here they are. Hey. Hey. Hey, guy. How you doing? Thanks for uh, making time for the two of us. We have to discuss mom's property. Yep. Before you know it, fall term's gonna be here, and we've got to plan the big bash for our celebration of the inauguration of Mom becoming president of the university. Well, let all you handle all that. Yeah, but, you know, that's just gonna be a whole bunch of guys standing around in tuxes. So. Yeah, we want something else, you know, friends and family, something Mom can actually enjoy for once. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking maybe we could get one of those big tents and uh, put them up at the land fair. Yeah, but you know what? It's going to be in September, and you never know what you're going to get. It could be like 90 degrees. So maybe we should talk to Renee and ask her if we get a book a place at the palace. That would work, too. Right. Uh, whatever. You know, Mom's easy to please. Yeah, well, the plans aren't going to be that easy. Why do I get the impression that the two of you want to leave all the work <laughs> to us? No, 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 no. It's just... You know, we trust you all for that sort of... To do a better job. Right. We would do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, don't think you can flatter us and, and get out of all the work, okay? Well, work before. <laughs> Listen, you know, we might have our own stuff to do. We might be busy ourselves. You know, I maybe I might have classes and working at the banner. Well, you've reconsidered my offer? I have. You know, now that Lindsay is out of St. Anne's, and I... No use in the gallery anymore. I was thinking about taking that internship. Well, I have a better idea. I'm listening. Well, you have been an intern at the Banner since high school. I think it's time for you to move on. I want you to run the college column. Really? <laughs> yeah, what do you say? I'll do it. Great. I'll go call Carson, start the paperwork and personnel. You guys order lunch. <laughs> Kevin's turning the Banner back into a family business. He even tried to recruit me to be a photographer. Yeah, but, uh, you have more important things on your mind, right, Reverend? That's mine. Hello? You see any interesting afternoon newspapers laying around? Oh, yes, I um, I did, as a matter of fact, and guess what? It's a big surprise. I'm not really happy about it. I, excuse me, it breaks up the sun. Um, I really can't talk to you now. I prefer later myself. Dinner at the country club. You know, my aunt has talked so much about you, I feel like I know you. <laughs> yes, that's what everyone says. What was that all about? Um, nothing. I'm more interested in who Kevin Source is at the police station. Do you have any idea who it is, Kelly? Uh, absolutely not. Well, I'll find out, but right now we have a bigger problem to worry about. What? You don't know about the trading of the Sun stock today? No, I haven't heard anything about it. The past few weeks, a third of the Sun's shares were traded. And today the buying skyrocketed. What? Mm-hmm. 
It smells like a takeover attempt to me. I know who it is. Yes, when you were, um... When Blair was away, uh, Asa came over and he threatened a hostile takeover unless she sold out to the banner. Oh, thank you. And you're just now telling me Don't that? Now, Kevin has hinted his... that he wanted to buy this son from me, but he was only joking, I thought. Not when it comes to something Kevin wants. He doesn't joke about that. Oh, I can't lose the son. Star's father's legacy was really important to Todd. And I don't have what I need right now to fight him back. You won't lose it. Trust me. Look, I gotta go. Oh? Where are you going? I'm gonna follow up on the phone call I just got. And I gotta go now. Listen now. I'm willing to give you 20% more on the sun stock now. Good. I knew you'd see it my way. Give me a year. I will know all there is to know about running ultraviolet. Then I can move on to my own club. See, I'm always thinking. Like that bartender over there. He's got the ultraviolet look, right? Watch. I'm gonna go steal him. I already have, um, <clears throat> an idea for the first article that I'm gonna write. I think that I'm gonna do an in-depth piece on the peace banner controversy happening at Land for You. I wanna <laughs> interview students and teachers and administrations on what they think about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll be right back. Uh, good. <laughs> Go for it. That's that's no seriously. That's good. That's uh, you should uh, you know you should find the right angle and you should push all kinds of buttons. Madam President, please do not make me a villain in this situation. The university radio station is a voice for all the students. Including those who dissent, no? Well, yes. Hmm. But this has always been a very traditional university. And freedom of speech has always been a very traditional American right. Dean, the university will never stifle dissent nor suppress the Bill of Rights, and frankly, you should never have interfered in this. So I would like the uh, disc jockey called the Voice of the Night brought back immediately. I am sorry, but I respectfully refuse. You do? Oh, dear. Well, in that case, I'm, I'm also very sorry. I'd like to see your letter of resignation by 9 o'clock tomorrow. I did it. I gave the petition to Mrs. Davidson. Mommy! Okay, don't squeeze me to death. Okay. What are you doing here? Oh, well, um, well, you and me, we gotta talk. Alone? I wanna give you guys some space. No, no, Al, it's okay. It's okay. Al's a big part of my life, real big. He's the most important person in it. Yeah, well, uh, Dad thinks maybe we should be more important. Your family? Well, what is that supposed to mean? It's fun. What's wrong? Listen, your protest thing got into the newspapers back home. Yeah? The Ridgeview Times wrote a story about me? Maybe you shouldn't be so excited, Marcy. Your brother tells me that, uh, people were pretty upset back in Ridgeview. Well, why? Don't you remember how many veterans live in our neighborhood? Yeah, of course. Well, they're the guys who defended this country, Marcy. Our own brother Eric's in the Army. I know that, Ron. What is this all about? 
Dad wants to know why you're dumping on the guys who are fighting for our country. I'm not. He said to remind you. Eric's over in the Middle East right now. You know that. Ronnie, Eric only joined the army because Dad made him. You know that. You know that Eric wanted a college education. So he thought that joining up to get money for school was the best way to make everybody happy. And most of the troops on the front lines right now are just like Eric. They are kids that wanted money for school. And just because I don't agree with the leaders of our country about the decisions that they're making does not mean that I don't support our troops. That's why I support peace. And work for it. Come on, Marcy, it's... It's not that simple, okay? Yeah. Maybe not. But I didn't... I, I didn't think that the people that I care about were going to be affected by my standing up for what I believe in. Ron, come on. This is not like you. I mean, is Dad that upset that he made you come all this way just to tell me? Dad's customers found out about you, okay? They're so ticked off, they're boycotting his restaurant, Marcy. What? Yeah. And the guys in Jerry's Fire Company, yeah, they're pretty ticked off, too. They won't even talk to him. But that's unfair. Yeah, well... Well, what about you? What about me? I... Yeah. My roofing business has fallen off a lot. God, Ronnie, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't... I didn't... I never thought I'd... If there was some way that I could do something... There is something that you can do, Marcy. You can just stop all this peace talk right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I came to the country club. It's just I knew you'd be here. It's okay. I thought if I could just, if I could just look at you, you know, if I could just see you, that it would be okay. I just, I just can't help myself. Trust me. I know what you mean. Seeing you across the room just isn't enough. You can't. Rex will stall the divorce just to get back at us. You could even lose your job. No. We just have to be stronger. I don't know if I can be. Then I'll be stronger, for both of us. Next time I come in a restaurant and you're there, I'll just leave. And if I see you walking down the street, I will turn around and I'll walk the other way. Don't you dare. No, it's gonna be okay. Your divorce is gonna come through, sooner or later. And we'll be together. And I will try to make things easier for us. I promise, Joe. Okay. Oh, I better get inside before Rex sees us. Yeah, and my family's in there, too. And you know, this is the last night we'll be able to be alone until after the divorce. I just want to make it last as long as possible. Don't give me this business about Antonio's family, okay? They they never got married. There was no family. I, I know. Terry only lied to Antonio because of some stupid mistake he made. So quit making excuses. If you care about him, you, you need to go for it because I know he cares about you and you are not responsible for Carrie and that baby. So follow your heart. My sentiments exactly. I have no idea what you're talking about. I really don't. <laughs> Where's Joey? What's going on with him, anyway? Yeah, he has been gone a long time. I mean, we need to focus on Mom's party. I, I mean, so far, no decisions have been made. <laughs> what were you talking to Grandpa about? Uh, just business. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, let me see if he knows. You know, Kevin, I'd like to meet that wife of yours. Okay. Huh. Now I see what's going on. Kevin, I need you to do me a huge favor, okay? I, I don't care what it is. Find something, anything to distract Rex. What's going on? Joe is with Jen, and I have no idea where they are, and I've got to find them before Rex... All right, yeah. Yeah, I know who you are. Yeah, well, I know who you are, too. You're the guy trying to keep my brother Joe from being happy. 
<laughs> you got it backwards, Kev. You see, your brother's trying to wreck my marriage. I'm gonna start over, make it real easy for you. You just give Jan a fast divorce, don't make any trouble for her, and I'll make it worth your while. Hey, sir. Look, I know what you're up to. You're trying to buy shares of my paper so you can take it over, aren't you? Hmm. Is this true, Grandpa? Don't you worry about it, Jessica. It's just business. Yeah, it's my business. And you're not gonna get away with it. And who's gonna stop me? How much did A.C. Buchanan offer you for your son's shares? Well, I'll see his price and raise it 15%. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. What do you want? What are you doing here? I believe you know who I work for. You left Paris quite abruptly. So I believe you know exactly what he wants. I do too, monsieur. I have no idea what you want, what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. The person I work for knows you married Mitch Laws, who became a very rich man. And not just in cash. There were, um, objects of value, too. Uh, Mitch uh, did leave me a small amount of money from his rather modest estate, but that was all there was. Excusez-moi. Madame. Wait a minute, where are you going? I'm gonna get what I came here for. I don't even think of calling anybody. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I'll uh, just act on day. I'll, I'll uh, escort you to the... Mon Dieu. Whoa. Sorry, no. I love my wife. Really? Well, Jen's worth a lot more than this. How much more? I am shocked. Shocked! We'll see how long it takes for you to come back with a better offer. So you think you're gonna buy all those stocks? I don't think so. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to save my paper. You hear that? You hear me, Asa? And I mean it. Kevin, did you know that Grandpa was trying to buy the sun? Do you think that I run my business decisions by my grandkids? Shame on you. I want to talk to you alone. Come on. This should be fun. What in the hell do you two think you're doing? Rex is in there looking for... Jen, go inside, now. <clears throat> Natalie's right. Okay, let me go first. See that she is ruining your life, Joe. I'm not gonna get hurt. We've decided we're gonna wait. I didn't see any waiting when I came out here. Looks like the family lunch moved outside. I was just heading back inside. <clears throat> yeah, me too. So, couldn't wait till after dinner to see me, huh? Look, don't start. Ace is trying to steal my paper, Kevin, and I want you to stop him. Me? What can I do? Come on. Look, it's Grandpa's money. It's his business. There's nothing I... Actually, there is one thing that you could do. What? Well, you could take me up on my offer to buy the sun. Don't worry, I'll keep you on. I like your style, in case you haven't noticed. You can go straight to hell, Kevin Buchanan. Blair, wait. You didn't come just to talk about newspapers. You were thinking about us, weren't you? I know I was. About that barn. What almost happened. Anything and everything that happened in that barn 
was a mistake. You sure about that? Mm -hmm. You asked me to be honest with you. Now you be honest with me. Come on, Blair. That wasn't a mistake, was it? Go ahead. Call Dad right now. He'll be real happy to hear you pulling out of this whole peace thing. Ronnie, listen, Marcy, I... Marcy, wait. Just give me a minute. Listen, there's something I need to tell you. I am really proud of you. Uh, you've been brave as hell through this whole mess. You stood up for yourself, and you gave people on this campus something to, to stand up for, something to believe in that matters. Yeah, look, we've gotten in the last 15 minutes at least 20 emails from people who believe that what you did is right and good. But if you think that that's going to affect your dad's business or put a wedge between you and your family, then you do what you have to do, Marcy. I'll take over from here on, okay? Yeah. Listen to your boyfriend. Let, let him do this, Marcy. I'm sorry. I didn't think you, Dad, and Jerry were going to be hurt by what I did. So this is over? You'll make the call? No, I can't. Sometimes you have to look past your own family. See, I told Dad this wasn't going to work. You're just as stubborn as you always were, Mom. Uh, uh, Ron! Ron, don't be mad at me! I can't! Ron! <sighs> Come here. Come here. Oh! I know how hard that was for you. I still got you? Damn straight. <laughs> Can't believe how you supported me through all this. Even lost your own radio show. I still got you, don't I? <laughs> I feel closer to you than anybody in my family ever. I feel more loved than I ever dreamed I could. today, Mr. Panos. Mm -hmm. AC Buchanan's made his offer for your shares, and I'm upping at 15%. <laughs> Do we have a deal? Hey, where have you been all this time? Um, the ladies' room. Balsam. You the guy on the case? Good, yeah, go ahead. Deliver that envelope. Obviously, Dean Baker went directly to the telephone. A half hour after I fired him, I was getting calls from outraged board members. Does he really have that much pull with the board? Apparently he does. They feel that his removal would cause destabilization within the university. <laughs> it won't. This must be hard on you. Well, it wasn't exactly a, you know, a whoop-de-doo fun morning, no. Are you having second thoughts about taking the job? No! No! Honey, f freedom of speech is vital to all of us. Never more so than on a college campus. Hey, it makes my job that much more important. Well, that's my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Hey, Mo. Hey, baby. Good to see you. You, too. I'm really sorry, y'all. Um, I, I have to run. Kelly, hey, I, I heard you were back. <laughs> and I heard you were answering to a higher authority. Right, well, <laughs> this just kind of made it official. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot's happened since you and I last saw each other. Yeah, a lot. You look great. You too. So, um, are you seeing anyone special? Yeah. Yeah, there is someone. Uh, I think I might have actually found the right person for me. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for I mean, you even look like you're in love. You seem happy. Yeah, it gets a little better every day. 
Uh, how about you and Kevin? You guys seem to have it all. Uh, well, you know, all is a funny word. But we have everything we want. You didn't answer me. I know why. Because if you're being honest, then you'd have to admit that you're as attracted to me as I am to you. You're right. I am. I mean, I was. Oh, no. I don't think so. Not was. Kevin, look, I, um, I was drawn to you because I miss Todd so much. Yeah, and, you know, things didn't work out with Dr. MacGyver, and I knew it was safe with you because I knew absolutely nothing was going to happen between us. Look. Kelly wasn't there. You were feeling lonely. Look, this thing between us is about you and me. It's not about other people not being here. Blair, we are right for each other. No, Kevin, you're married to my cousin. I don't want to hurt her. She called me. She told me that she thinks that you're seeing another woman, and she wants me to help her find out who it was. Look, do you know how that makes me Look, feel? all I know is how we feel when we're together. Look, stop, we, we can't have those feelings. Now, just don't call me. Don't come by and see me. Just leave me alone, all right? Look, Blair. What's going on out here? Kelly, I, am. Um, I was just... Telling Kevin what I think about his journalistic ethics, and I think that he must be bribing somebody to get the scoops that he gets, you know? Yeah, well, Blair apparently thinks that I'm getting too close to certain people. Oh, come on, you two. No more fighting, okay? Like, we are family, the three of us. I want us to be close. Come on, let's go back inside. Come on. I was sewing. Hmm. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Oh, no, no, no. What? What? Oh, no, it's that's so funny. It opens here. Oh. oh okay. When the time is right, we'll know. I hope so. The time is right. <laughs> Just got another email. Oh, wow, well, I want to see. I will look. I don't know how many shares the old coot bought, but I want you to find out. Get on it. Now. Do you think you could get your husband here to sit still for a couple of hours? Oh, uh, it depends. What for? Well, I was thinking of getting somebody to do an oil painting of the two of you. What? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Maybe someday hanging in the governor's mansion. Oh, I guess I could make time for that. <laughs> I'll put the stock transfer through today. First the sun, and everything else. Le frigo, c'est ridicule! Arrêtez, monsieur! You, you... Where is it? Oh, you have searched every inch of my house. Obviously, whatever you're looking for is not here. Don't do it, please, not with me. You know what I want. A diamond. Oh, I have... Diamond earrings, necklaces, bracelets. I want the Badra. And you better help me find it. Otherwise, our mutual acquaintance in Bari won't play games. I don't have it. Well, you better have it when I come back. Otherwise, someone is going to get hurt. out of here. Who? 
Oh, who else? Father Joe. You know what? This is a real drag. I want to go home. Okay, so go. I've got to interview this bartender when he gets done with the shift, so... Hey, wait. Look, I know you don't believe me, but I do want us to stay married. <laughs> I've got this feeling that things are going to work out after all. Yeah. I have a feeling things are going to work out, too. Tell me, Joe, you tell me what happened between you and Jen Rappaport. Oh, nothing. I'm, I haven't been seeing Jen. But you have, haven't you? No, no. I, Jen and I, I... She's a married woman. I, I wouldn't put her in that position. So you have never been intimate with her? Of course not. Joe, tell me the truth. I am. But you can't be. You can't be, or how do you explain this? I have warned you so many, many times, Joe. Look, Andra, I'm sorry. So am I. But I have no choice. You are suspended from your position as curate at St. James. On the next One Life to Live. First thing we're gonna fire is you and your sorry hide. I had to do something to stop Ace's takeover pit. This isn't Joe's fault. You can't take his job away. I can't believe that somebody would actually want me dead. Hi, this is Linda Dano, and I love playing Felicia on Another World. I'm so thrilled SoapNet is taking us back to Bay City. Every weekday, turn on SoapNet and return to another world. SoapNet, pure soap 24-7, the new way to watch soap.